Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, why don't you hit the little subscribe button for us? It does help us out. Do you have a Nintendo Switch that the screen has accidentally got damaged and it's cracked or malfunctioning in some other way? Well, it's not a hard procedure, but there's a few gotchas involved with getting the digitizer screen off and getting into it safely. But in today's video, we'll do a walkthrough on how to replace that screen. So stick around and we'll show you how it's done. Hey, welcome back. Today on the bench, we have a Nintendo Switch that has had some screen damage. Um, and as you can see, it's smashed, but we can hear that our touch sensor is still working. So the digitizer is okay. It's just, there's been an impact into the screen. So while it's not a hard procedure, it's a little on the delicate side. So I'm gonna start with taking it apart and getting to some of our connections. And then I'll show you how to get the digitizer off safely. And um, I'll be right back. Okay. And as you can see, we've got the back of our switch off. Um, just for a recap, you have four tri-wing screws that need to come out, a Phillips screw underneath the kickstand, two, ki uh, sorry, one screw on the bottom, one screw on the top, two screws on the bottom. Uh, those are Phillips. The only tri-wings are the four on the back. From there, the shield comes off with a few Phillips screws. And then we can get to the back of our switch. Um, the best thing to do at this point is to disconnect the battery. And it just lifts straight out of the connector. You can use any non-metallic, uh, preferably non-metallic item that you have. If you're careful, you can just use some tweezers, but come back behind the wire so you don't short anything. Okay, from here, we're kind of where we need to be. <clears throat> so this is our screen connector and this is our touch connector. So I wanted to start at this point in the video, just so you can see where we're at. There's plenty of videos on how to get the back of the covers off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this little bail And if you get a point underneath the edge, it usually makes getting these connectors out pretty easy. Of course, this one's gonna be stubborn. Well, we can, you know what? <laughs> the other thing you can do is just go ahead and leave it. And we're gonna get these screws out. This is our cartridge slot. There's one screw here. And this is our headphone jack, and we've got two screws up here. The nice thing, most of these silver screws in the back are all the same. So we don't really have to keep track of what went where. This little plastic cover will come up. And we have one Lego connector back. It's almost hidden behind the heat, the heat sink. And we can remove that, but it's not 100% necessary. Um, Maybe for this video, we'll do it just for clarity's sake. So more or less, it's just these four, or these three screws by the CPU. And then it's just kind of held in place by this tape. Um, so if you lift it off and tip it, up that foam comes out just like that now there's going to be some thermal grease on it so just set it aside where it won't be in the way um, actually from here you can see the two other connectors this is your power switch and this is your fan power so anyway here's the the Lego connector if you can get under the edge 
it just pops up. You don't want to force it. That one was actually pretty snug. A lot of times they just come right out. Now with the bale open, we can just slide that connector out. It doesn't even put up a fight. So here's our two connectors we need to deal with. So if we lift the connector up on the video port, this one will be ready to come out. Now, one word, it is a little easier with the motherboard out, but it's not necessary. So we're gonna do it in this way. So, okay, so if we come back here, you can see that we have a ribbon cable coming through this edge of the screen for the digitizer. <clears throat> so we wanna be careful. But we have these two openings here for our speakers that are actually kind of a nice place to get started. You can get underneath with a tool and work your way around. Now, I have found the easiest way to do this is to heat this up. Um, it doesn't take a lot of heat. Um, a, a, a good, powerful hair dryer is plenty to soften the glue behind here. Um, I use my hot air station set to about 175, 180, which is hair dryer temperatures. <coughs> Excuse me. And just start heating the edge, working the edge. Because what we need to do is soften that glue to get to the LCD panel. It's going to take a couple minutes. Don't rush this. Um, you don't want to use more heat because you could potentially melt things. Um, the digitizer itself is not horribly expensive, but if we can salvage it, all the better. I will warn you though, it's not always salvageable. Sometimes just pulling up on the edge, it will crack. Okay, here it comes. Okay, once you get a tool underneath, it's a little easier to start walking around. I know some people will just pull this off and just replace it, but for the extra five or 10 minutes, it can help reduce the cost to a customer.
Okay. Now, we can just leave a tool under this edge to keep it held up so it doesn't fall back into the glue. You don't want to come completely around this backside because that's where the ribbon cable is. So we would need to come back around here so we can get to here to lift it up gently. Also, knowing that our screen is broken, there could be some glass. Huh, that should do it. <laughs> our panel lifted out with it. which is not normal. Normally the panel stays right down inside the the frame. Okay. Just make sure the glue's all lifted off. And our digitizer can come out just like that. We'll set it aside. You can see our little cable. Now, if you're planning on on replacing the digitizer, <clears throat> it's not a big deal. You can just pull that thing off and clean the old glue. Um, but the one nice thing about using the heat is all the glue does come off. Now, normally, like I was saying, the screen will just stay down inside. This one already peeled up. And you can see our ribbon cable here coming in behind the motherboard. So if we lift it out of the connector and put it straight, it will drop down. Don't forget about your backlight. There we go. There's our old panel. Totally destroyed. <laughs> All right. Okay, from this point, we're more or less ready to put this in. Now there's a few gotchas involved. <clears throat> the ribbon cable from our new panel has to be folded underneath along with the the backlight and they are thin and they are fragile 
If you want to remove the motherboard, it does make the access to the slots a little easier. But that's completely up to the individual. We're going to go ahead and try it with the motherboard in. And if we can't get the connection bent around, we'll go ahead and remove the board. But for now, let's try it this way. So if we set the board down, and unfortunately, this is not going to be the best of shots. These have to fold under, but you need to be very careful. They will rip if you pull them sideways. So if you carefully lay it down, you can feed that right through. And the same thing. Okay. Both cables are in place and our screen is where it should be. So we're just going to gently turn this over. I'm going to use the foam that it came with to give us a safe place to work. Okay. Now, like I was saying, this ribbon cable is pretty fragile. This, <laughs> the backlight can actually take a little bit of, of uh, movement, but so we get the bail up on the backlight. goes in just like that and the bail should click down. Never force these bales. If they seem tight, you probably don't have the ribbon in the whole way. <clears throat> now this one usually takes a little bit of effort and you need to be careful um, because this can rip. Do not, do not try to fold it over and crimp it to make it easier getting in this connector. You need to just roll it over, keep it rolled, and don't force anything. By the way, the, the, little, the little connector here can be damaged, and I've got another switch on the bench right now um, needing it, and I've just got some parts in, so... <clears throat> Just take your time and work it down into the connector. And unfortunately, my head's going to be in the shot. Okay. As you can see, it is possible. Don't get frustrated. Don't rush it. Don't try to force the connector in on the pins. Make sure it's in, it's flat, and it slides in. So now, we can flip it back over. Peel off our protector. It looks like there's something in the back of this one. Hmm. Okay. Because the way the ribbons 
fold over from this edge, you can safely pick it up. Make sure there's no dust on there. Get our digitizer. Make sure we didn't put any dust on the back side of it. Make sure your adhesive is still down. And flip the right way. That's the other nice thing about using heat to remove these. That glue on the digitizer is going to be just fine to reuse. Work it up into the top edge and set it back down. We're all back together. So from here, we can put it back together. The easy thing to do would be to put this ribbon back in while it's apart. instead of trying to get it folded back over. Like that. And then we can put a, we can put a screw back in here to hold our cartridge slot in place. Sometimes that makes it a little easier on getting that Lego connector lined up. But be careful with this Lego connector. These are fragile also. They're not as fragile as these ribbon cables, but you want to make sure it's lined up before you put any downward pressure on it. There we go. They're hard to see when you're lining them up. It's kind of a, a cup with contacts here and here, and then contacts on both sides. And it's very easy to get it on top of one or the other. And you don't want to push because you'll damage the plastic and the contacts. But if you can get an edge lined up, then it will roll in and snap down. Now, with the switch, this one had some dust already in it. With the switch, most of these aren't old enough to worry about the thermal paste being hard. But, you know, if you're in doubt, you can always just put another dab on there, but I'm going to go ahead and clean this one just to, just to make sure this one looks like it might be an early one. This is just IPA. It'll cut through the, the old thermal grease pretty, pretty easy. Give us a nice clean spot to work with. <clears throat> you can use Arctic Silver or you know whatever your, <clears throat> your favorite brand is.
I generally reserve the more expensive thermal paste for the systems that generate a lot of heat. This is just a, a generic silver based thermal grease. And it goes in from the front and then lays down. Oops. Okay, and honestly at this point, we could plug in our battery and actually give that screen a little check. Like I've said, that connector just lines up and pushes straight in. Let's see what we got. Looks like everything's good. Our touch panel still works and everything else is happy. So I'll go ahead and finish buttoning this one up uh, off camera. But for now, I think we're gonna have a happy customer. Thanks for joining. If you have any comments about the procedure or any how to's on, on what I've done today, please make a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.